Welcome back to Campus Countdown. I'm your host, Emily Sturge, and today we'll be discussing a university pays $60,000 to a TikTok star but gives minimal funding to conservative clubs, pro-life students were told to kill themselves during a campus event, and a sorority has accepted its first male member. We will be covering these three stories and more on today's episode of Campus Countdown. In our third story this week, the University of Florida paid TikTok personality Josh Richards $60,000 for an on-campus event. However, the university refused funding to conservative groups. The $60,000 was allocated from student activity and service fees controlled by the student government. The student government denied funding to the UF College Republicans and to Young Americans for Freedom. Young Americans for Freedom received $180 in travel funds. On the other hand, Young Democratic Socialists of America received $1,600 from the travel budget and $1,700 from the operational budget. A statement released on Instagram by UF College Republicans stated, Regardless of your political or ideological affiliation, student organizations represent a vital entity of culture and community to the students of UF, which is being actively ignored by our government that claims to represent the voices of students. In our second story this week, pro-life students were told to kill themselves during a campus event. Here with all the details on that story is campus reform correspondent Madeline Markwood. A pro-abortion student at the University of Missouri told pro-life students to kill themselves during an activism event. The students are part of the group Students for Life. The pro-abortion students reportedly threw the chapter's panels to the ground and turned an abortion is not right banner backwards. The students also threw recruitment materials in the trash. Mizzou police were called to settle the crowd and Students for Life staff writer Carolyn Wharton told Campus Reform the following. Incidents like this show the abortion lobby's overall acceptance of violence. If you get in their way, abortion supporters are in favor of eliminating you for their convenience, inside or outside the womb. This incident is yet another example for the pro-life harassment that has plagued college campuses. In September, a pro-abortion student at the College of William and Mary reportedly threw urine on pro-life students. Later that month, pro-abortion students struck again at the Williamsburg, Virginia campus by vandalizing a pro-life memorial for the unborn. Pro-life harassment has been on the rise during the fall semester, and each situation is just one example of the bigger trend. In our top story this week, a sorority has accepted its first male member into its ranks. University of Wyoming Kappa Kappa Gamma has become the first sorority at the university to accept a male member into its sisterhood. Artemis Langford, a biological male who identifies as a woman, said that he is excited to be in a sisterhood of awesome women that want to make history. Langford was accepted into the sorority through a majority vote from the UW chapter. Female students who identify as male are also permitted to remain in the chapter. Female exclusive organizations have been rapidly conceding ground to the transgender movement. A 2021 campus reform analysis of women-only colleges found that 82% accept transgender or non-binary applicants. The University of Wyoming's Kappa Kappa Gamma chapter accepting a male student makes me nervous. There is no indication that this practice will not spread across college campuses. As a sorority member at the University of Florida, I don't want to see men infiltrating women's spaces on college campuses. By admitting a man, Kappa Kappa Gamma is attempting to cancel womanhood. I belong to a sorority because I want to be around women who inspire and support me. Making sororities co-ed defeats this purpose. Now it's time for the woke tweet of the week. This University of Florida assistant professor took to Twitter to condemn the university's nomination of Senator Ben Sass, a Republican from Nebraska, for the university's next president. The assistant professor wrote, I love our at UF students. Ben Sass does not represent our values. Our community does not want him. Hashtag no Sass. She tweeted this along with pictures of students at protests on UF's campus. In my latest Man on the Street video, I spoke to dozens of students at the University of Florida about their opinions on Sass's nomination. 
there are many hidden conservative voices on UF's campus that believe SAS's nomination will bring much needed viewpoint diversity to the campus, which liberals dominate. The Leadership Institute's campus reform has reported that nearly 85% of University of Florida faculty contributions went to Democrats in the 2020 election cycle. A conservative university president could help balance this left-leaning faculty. The University of Florida is in need of the ideological and intellectual diversity, and SAS is a good solution. That wraps up this week's edition of Campus Countdown. To read about these stories and more, visit campusreform.org. Remember to like and subscribe here on YouTube, and you can also follow us over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Campus Reform. I'm Emily Sturge. Thanks for watching Campus Countdown.